We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night. Ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end... What will I become? Senwa Saga. Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. What's up, everybody? Max Cavalera, Soulfly, and you listen to Brutally Delicious Podcast. Stay metal, motherfuckers. We got it. Max. Hello. Hey, how are you, my friend? Good to see you again. How you guys doing? Good. I'm Bruce. That's my partner, Grant. What's up, guys? I spoke with you on the uh, Go Ahead and Die round. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. I remember you. I remember. You you were in a van, moving, traveling somewhere. Yeah. (laughs) I'm at home now. A little little cozier. Yeah, nice, easy, nice and easy. Anyway, thank you for joining us. I know you're busy, and I really appreciate your time. And I'm just going to jump in real quick, and then I'm going to let Grant take it over. But my biggest okay. question is, how in the world do you keep up with all of these projects? Because, good God, you've got 100 of them going. A lot of Red Bull. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> man, I don't know. I just I, – I, I love metal, man. I freaking love this thing, and, and – uh, you know, kind of like uh, how some athletes just love playing sports. I just love metal, man. I love playing. I love listening. I love the whole the whole nine yard. So when you go to write a song, then, are you writing a song specifically for Soulfly or the Cavalera Conspiracy or Sepultura? Or are you writing a song and then seeing where it fits? Depends. Depends. Uh, there's some times where I'm writing for a specific album where I'm like, I'm, I'm all in, I'm all in on that record and what I'm looking for. And there's some other times where, uh, I think it's actually kind of cooler is when I'm just sitting with the guitar riffing for no reason. And knowing that those, some of those riffs are going to end up somewhere, somehow I get, I got all these bands, you know, like Killer BQ and Cavalera and, Go ahead and die and soul fly and uh and sometimes you know just riffing man riff riff is an art form my, my brothers it's it's a it's a, a long forgotten i think cavemans were riffing back in the cave back in the day <laughs> <laughs> nice and uh, you know it's a great art form and riffing is great i love riffs uh, i like it more than you know, making a song involves lyrics and vocals, you know, but to me, what I'm really, really in love with is riffing, finding that riff. There's nothing more satisfying than making a new riff and knowing that when that riff drops, it's going to go out like a nuclear bomb hitting, you know, so it's a, it's a very, very uh, uh, a, a fun, exciting type of thing that happens when you when you make a good riff. Awesome. Grant, take it away. Awesome. Max, thank you very much for joining me, mate. Apologies if I stutter, because I am legitimately a massive, massive fan of your music. Um, I have been since I was in my teens. It's an honor to be speaking to you, dude. It really, really is. Um, thank you. You guys, where are you. Where are you guys calling from? I'm in Richmond, Virginia, but he's in the UK, hence the reason we're doing this, because it's in, ahead of your European run there. Oh, okay. Wow. So it's got to be yeah, like late, late for him, for you and Rob, right? Yeah, man. It's 11.30 at night here. Um, um, you guys are playing. Uh, and you Burning the midnight oil. Yes. Yeah, man. I work <laughs> nights, so this is kind of okay. Um, um, all right. Yeah, cool. Two weeks time you're playing in Newcastle. Uh, four weeks time you're playing in Newcastle, my hometown, and I absolutely can't wait to see you guys. Yeah, yeah, we're getting ready. I think we 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 start practicing this week. Uh, you know, sharpening the knives, as they say. Uh, sharpening the weapons, getting the weapons ready, and uh, you know, 
getting ready for for want, man. go there and to see what we can do. But it's gonna be fun. Uh, Third World Trilogy is called. Yeah. So this is the uh, the works of the the Third World era, Max Cavalera. So it's the the albums that we were not happy with the recordings, and we felt they needed a new paint job. They needed they need to go come back to life. They needed to be resuscitated, <laughs> you know. And we did that with them. And I think you know, Morbid Vision, the best show the stage came out amazing. People' reaction was out of this world. I couldn't be any happier. And they'll be, they, they're going to be pleased with Schizophrenia, too, because it's, it's another banger of an album that was really fun revisiting and making it better, you know, because that's, that's what we tried to do is making those, those albums better. That's awesome. That you've kind of already answered my first question there, because my first question here was going to be in relation to the re-recording of Morbid Visions and uh, Bestial Devastation. It's almost like you've come full circle musically you've gone very much back to you know the first things that you released so i wanted to know what's next on the table for you now that you've kind of gone back and revisited the old stuff are you going to keep revisiting old stuff yeah i mean the, the plan is to to uh you know schizophrenia comes out in june we're gonna tour for that for a little bit um but i'm i'm heavily involved in the new soul fly right now um also for next year and i'm just i mean Soulfly is just on a high right now we just play ohio and had a just an amazing show um it was kind of a surreal experience having the crowd chanting we they you know one more song which i when you play a lot of festivals like i do you, you just don't get that they just it's kind of like it's like a buffet. They just they 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 try the chicken. They want to try the beef, you know. They want to move on to dessert. You know, they're they're done with you. You know, <laughs> give me the next band. You know, but that wasn't the case. They wanted. They really wanted more Soulfly. They wanted another song, and unfortunately, time ran out and we couldn't play. But the feeling of of of, of ending the set on that high, of having the crowd wanted more. Uh, I think that's just going to be fuel for the next record that we're going to, you know, start writing. I'm probably going to be writing during the tour. So I'm going to probably be, uh, the cool thing about that is that I'll get inspired by the tour, by the fans, by the crowd. And so when I, when I get back in the bus after a show with a guitar, I'm still gonna be high from the show, and I'll probably try to translate that into some kind of riffing that will, will hopefully translate from that and make the album even more exciting. If that, you know, hopefully that'll be the case for that. But I'm looking for a, a Soulfly record for next year, and then after besides that, just touring, a lot of touring. I, you know, we live for tour. That's what we do, and uh, gotta go where the where the fans are. You know. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for that, dude. On the topic of writing, that's where my next question comes in. Um, one of my favorite tracks out of your entire back catalog is Territory. Um, it's been 30 years since you, you wrote Territory, and it is a, an amazing, scathing attack on the way the, the media manipulates people and profiteering from war and that kind of stuff. We're 30 years on from that now, and it seems very much like we're living in a world where propaganda and manipulation is worse than ever. You know, social media, Facebook, fucking Twitter, that kind of thing. Everybody's constantly giving people false information, you know, to, as you put it, control their anger. What do you think of the state of the world in relation to the media and propaganda now that you are so far away from the song that almost not preempted it's you saw it told. basically yeah yeah you foretold it yeah it's uh it, it's quite a trip when you make make songs like that and years down the road there are more relevant than when they were first written and and that's uh 
you can look at at, at, at both ways as um it, it's 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 a it's a crazy thing but it's also like uh we took it all we brought them to our land an endless night ember hot and icy cold the rage of the earth we made this curse carved it in the blood on our backs we did not see we could not but she did and in the end what will i become senwa saga hellblade 2 play it now with game pass when people think of, of us metalheads not being intelligent you know uh, they they don't know that we are actually you know we are we know what we're talking about man we're not just talking out of our ass you know we are we have opinions we have you know if we know information we we know of the world and and uh yeah i love a song like territory for many reasons i think that it's a very well constructed song uh one of my favorite catch choruses uh war for territory that people sing it uh full loud voices like chanting and it has to me one of the most savages beat down endings uh which is just music you know you don't you i didn't need it to sing on that part like, in fact if i would have sang on it it would have ruined it because it's it's it's, it's a savage beat down uh just raw power in the end of that track after after the the music rings out we come back with the drums like a crescendo and just like it's like beating something down you know um yeah. of course we did this the video in uh israel and there's scenes of us in drinking tea with the palestinians in the desert and filming inside jerusalem you know and uh it was crazy we didn't really had the rights to film there we never asked for it so we did a guerrilla style which is like backpack kind of filming you know the director had the camera with him when once he's done filming he put the camera in his backpack and act like a tourist like he's just there sightseeing um hopefully we didn't get cat they didn't get caught with in the border with those the footage and get confiscated uh, we got all that back to america and it put the it put all the video together but it was a trip it was a, it was a crazy video we had to wake up some of the scenes in the in the dead sea we had to get, wake up at three in the morning to film them because it was the the sunrise the director wanted to catch us at the sunrise and uh there are some scenes in the Dead Sea. It's it's very salted, you know. The water is very salted, and I remember I had some cuts like near my leg and my balls, and it was hurting. So when I'm screaming in the video, I'm really in pain. <laughs> that's uh, if you watch the video, you can actually you actually I laugh when I watch it. I would say it looks it, for me it's funny because I'm actually screaming out of pain, not not pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> but it was nice. a, a it was a tremendous video and uh it's crazy that israel and palestine is in the conflict right now and uh yeah so so wild you know um there's there's some songs that were kind of like that i think if you go and, and look at even something like biotech is godzilla you can think of it even like COVID, maybe being a, a some kind of biotech type uh corporation pharmaceutical uh products frankenstein creation type thing you know i don't know um but yeah i mean like i i think you know matt always had all these subjects you know of course there's always a, a lot of satanic stuff and all that but i think bands like us and and uh you know early metallica were really really cool lyrics you know i mean if you if you if you analyze hatfield's uh, ride the lightning master of puppets era lyrics they're, they're fucking on it man they're spot on uh also social commentaries about the world you know 
And we kind of wrote that a lot on 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 Sepultura. Continue with Soulfly, even though although Soulfly got a little bit more spiritual, which was kind of cool to me to be a little bit more empowering people to believe in yourself and be not to really pointing out the problem, but trying to fix the problem rather than telling the people what the problem is, trying to tell them how you can fix the problem, you know? So it's, it's pretty cool. The power of lyrics are pretty strong in, in a metal world. And I'm, I'm glad I got to do a little, still doing a little bit of that, you know, through the years. Nice. That's awesome, dude. Thank you for that, man. What you've said there, it, it's weird. You keep preempting my next questions, man, and I love this. <laughs> He's <laughs> foretelling said, again. Yeah, man. Um, the spirituality <laughs> and being a little bit more positive in your subject matters. Um, there's an element of positivity that I wanted to um, ask you about because <clears throat> I've got Gloria on Facebook and some of the stuff that she posts is wonderfully empowering and emotional as a couple of weeks ago she posted a photo of you and i believe the lines were this is max uh writing his magnum magnum opus and it was a photo of you sitting there right now all of the lyrics for the first soulfly album um i guess what it's what i wanted to ask is in rock music in music in general and in show business relationships and the way that we bond with people is often very throwaway um, you know, people get involved in a relationship and then they disappear and they get involved with a band and they disappear. The strength that you and Gloria have had throughout your entire career, is, to me, is unmatched in the music industry with the respect and the love that you have for each other. How do you feel it is that you've been able to maintain that strength between the two of you in a world where most people are discarding their partners and not really loving each other that much? Yeah, I mean, we have a really unique relationship. In, 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 in fact, I think the, the the main ingredient of for for our relationship to to stay strong and and last so long is we like a lot of the same stuff, and we know how to we know how to kind of divide it. Also, um, like I don't tell her how to manage it; she doesn't tell me how to write a song. You know. And we, we we know that line and we don't cross that line, you know, and uh, and that's like that totally out of respect for each other's um, work ethic, you know, and um, and I, I, I think she's one of the most uh, amazing uh, for sure um, humans I ever met because the amount of passion the people don't see it that she puts into the music and into creating something uh, like like my story, and it's so hard. If, if, if people have no idea how hard it is to stay relevant in a world after thirty years, you know, a lot of people can't do after two years. Some people after five years, they're they're done, you know. And she kept me re relevant throughout all these years always creative, always moving forward, always uh, making great tours, making great ideas, having great album ideas. And and then in our private life, we just kind of create our own little empire type thing. Now with, now with the kids involved, you know, have Zion playing drums for Soulfly, have Igor, I do go ahead and die with him. He plays bass for Cavalera. And some of the other kids, like Richie, sells T-shirts. And we have our grandkid now comes out and takes photos for us. And uh, it's like a, a mini uh, empire. Like, a, But it's so cool because it's organic, you know. Uh, it's not something that some big Hollywood guy put it together. Oh, I'm going to make this metal family. And I'm going to put all these people together. And they're going to be a great... Uh, you know, a, a cool metal family, and it's not like that. It's organic. It's born like that. It's years of blood, sweat, and tears in this music, working for this thing that we love. Uh, passionately working for every project. Doesn't matter how big or small they are. 
Um, so fly is a bigger thing, but go ahead and die gets as much attention because we just love to, to create. We love to do stuff, you know, um, it's a unique thing. It's a unique relationship and it, the mutual respect and love that we have for each other. I have to, to, to say that, you know, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here talking because I would uh, definitely overdose and would have been dead on a ditch somewhere on tour from the abuse of drugs and alcohol, you know, uh, I was a bit of a Tasmanian devil back in the day. And, uh, uh, you know, we just live and learn, man, but I'm glad I didn't go that route. I'm glad I stick around and, you know, I get to enjoy my family and my kids and, and my, my life and my music with, and share that with the fans, you know, instead of being another rock and roll tragedy story, you know, that's great, Max. Thank you for that. I've got one last question, mate. And again, you've kind of preempted it a little bit there when you talked about your, like, your self-destructive time and what have you. Um, you mentioned at the beginning that it's late here. The reason that it's late here is because I work uh, with people that are suicidal and people that have got really severe depression and that kind of thing. Mental health is something that is very, very close to my heart. And the world right now, especially with you being around as long as you have and the, you know, you're your fan base has aged with you. There's almost an epidemic in the world of people that are suffering from depression, that are feeling like they can't go on. And any fan of yours knows that there's been darkness in your own life. What would you say to the fans of your music that are perhaps sitting there facing darkness, they're facing depression, they're feeling like they can't go on, you know, especially when a lot of us that feel negative emotions use music to lift us well i think to to me it's one of the most amazing things about music is that this power that has to to make you when you're in a such a vulnerable desperate situation that you don't really think there's hope or there's a solution um Music is that one thing that's always been there for me. It's almost like I said it before, is it becomes your weapon, becomes something to hold on to it. Uh when everything else kind of fades away, you can count on music. And and that's that to me, that's what was a bit confusing when I left Sepultura. I was worried that it was over that that I would not have a weapon anymore when I when when really I found out it, I was just beginning to you know the darkest moment was creating Soulfly one and that's that's probably why Gloria printed that picture I was in a horrible place man like not quite suicidal but really uh uninspired like i didn't want to get out of bed i just want to like be drugged out and drink and just be wasted like i was waste, wasting a life you know and i think your true character comes more in 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 this hour of suffering more than in the hour of success i think in the hour of success is like i don't know it's easier to be happier with everything that's happening and it's harder to to find some kind of inspiration in the dark moment, and I think that's the that's to me the real true meaning of of, of an artist is when he can find uh, you know inspiration in a real dark time and create and make something powerful from that moment. That's that's some powerful shit. Yes, it is. And saying that is some powerful shit as well, mate. That that. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank so to, you so much. So to close things out, because I know we're running up on time, you got four weeks until you're heading for the UK run, right? It's going to take you right through the summer. You're playing the festivals as well? Yeah, we're doing a couple of uh, grass pop, and I'm, I'm not sure which ones yet, but doing some headlines in the UK, in uh, Glasgow and Ireland and Leicester. We're playing Leicester, which I'm really excited um also newcastle being a big venom fan uh maybe we even can pull out a venom cover song that night 
That would have been cool. I used to be in a band with Venom's drummer, man. I could probably pull that off for you. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I mean, like, that's uh, that's awesome, man. And, um, yeah, there's a couple festivals. I'm not sure w- uh, which ones. Uh, <clears throat> where I haven't really looked at the whole uh, itinerary yet. I, I, I kind of like to be surprised. I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm like, like, I like to be on tour and, and, and ask the night before somebody like, where are we going to be tomorrow? And then they'll tell me, oh, tomorrow you're playing this, this big festival rather than, than be, a, you know, prepare for weeks and right. wait, you know, I like to be uh, kind of surprised. Oh shit. That's tomorrow. You know, in nice. fact, it was so funny. Soulfly just played Daytona, you know, uh, we did Rockville. I, I had no idea I was going to Daytona to the race track. None. When I got there, I was like, whoa, this is crazy. <laughs> it's where Dale Earnhardt died. You know, it's uh wow, what a place. And we're doing a concert there. You know, it was like it's more fun when you get surprised. I don't know. Uh it's it's more exciting, like when you don't prepare yourself too much for it, you know. And, then, and and by doing that, I think I'm less nervous because sometimes you can let the nerves take over you and you get too nervous and too much anxiety. Um, by doing that, I think I don't have any anxiety because I don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow. Fair enough. Hey, what's up? My name's Lurk, and I'm the host of Lamb Goat's Van Flip Podcast. Every week, I have in-depth conversations with bands from all over the scene, big and small. We also like to keep our finger on the pulse and showcase up-and-coming bands on the show as well. So come check out Lamb Goat's Van Flip Podcast.